All right, guys, so <clears throat> this is going to be section three of Crash Zone. And um, what we're going to be doing in section three is we're going to be just adding a wall. And then we are going to be adding um, some different surfaces for the cars to drive on. So there's going to be like a pavement and there's going to be a dirt. And then based on the different surface, the cars are going to have like different speeds and act kind of differently that way. Okay. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is let's just go to our game layout and let's make a sprite. Okay, and we're going to call it wall. And then we're just going to insert that and click on the screen. All right, and then what we're going to do um, is we're just going to fill it in with a solid color. So we'll just grab the paint bucket and I'm just going to make mine like gray. Something like that should be fine. Okay, and then that should be it there. Pretty basic. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust the size and position of this. So we are going to click on it and we're going to put the position at 54, 360. Okay. And then we're going to set the size to 6 by 613. So we're going to do 6, 613. All right. So we've got that there. I guess the position is a little bit off. So we'll just move that to the left here a little bit. Um, and we might adjust these a little bit too. I'm just going off of what they're telling me in the presentation, but we'll probably change these. Um, yeah, and then we're just gonna clone this and put this around the wall, yep. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this wall solid. So this is pretty basic. So let's go ahead and go to behaviors um, and we'll make it solid. All right, so now we made this wall solid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control minus and zoom out so I can kind of see everything. And yeah, the size and position they gave me, that wasn't quite right. So what we'll do is we're literally just going to drag this so it extends out the whole way. Something like that. And then I'm just going to hold Control and I'm just going to drag another one out for the other side. Or here. Perfect. And then um, we're going to drag one for the top and one for the bottom. For these top and bottom ones, you just want to resize them so that they, you know, go the way that makes sense. So if we just do something like this. And then once I've got the top one made, I can just clone that one on the bottom. And then since we made the first one solid, all of these other clones will be solid as well. So then we don't have to worry about trying to put the same behavior on all of them. Okay. So we did all that. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the next, whoops, go to the next slide here. There we go. All right. So we did that. We did that. Okay. And that should all be good for the wall. So that's pretty basic there. Okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make it so the cars take a different amount of damage when they hit the wall. So when they crash into the wall, we want them to still take damage. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our event sheet. We're going to make a global variable. And we're going to call it wall damage. And I think the default value, let me go back here. Default value is 10 on wall damage. Okay. Done. So we got that. Perfect. All right. And then all we're going to do is we're going to set up a collision event. So we'll just go down to the bottom of the event sheet here. And we're just going to do car black on collision with another object. Okay. And then when it collides with the wall. Okay, um, and then we're going to add another condition to this. So we're going to add another condition. So what the condition is going to be is we don't want to take damage anytime we touch the wall, right? It's kind of like when we collide with the other car. We want to make sure that we're going fast enough to actually do damage. So we're going to do system compare two values. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do absolute value. So ABS of car black car dot speed is greater than or equal to 75 so we'll do a parentheses here and then we'll do greater than or equal to and then 75 like that okay all right so that's what it should look like car black on collision with wall and then as long as the absolute value of the car speed is above 75 
Okay, and then we're just going to add our damage event here. So we're going to add an action. And it's going to be for car black. And we're going to do subtract from. And we're going to subtract from health. And our equation is going to be wall damage. Wall damage. There it is. Uh, wall damage times car black. Uh, damage multiplier and that should be it okay so we have car black subtract wall damage times car black damage multiplier from health okay so it should look like that okay and then we're essentially just going to do this exact same event but we're going to do it for car white so what we're going to do is i'm going to click on the green arrow here on event well mine it's 42 yours could be slightly different i'm going to do control c to copy control v to paste and get another one right below it and then I'm just going to replace this object. So I'm going to right click on the car black, replace object, and we're going to replace car black with car white. Um, and then we got to make sure everything here that says car black, we change to car white. So we have to double click this condition here. And this has to be car white dot car dot speed. And if any one of these are off, it's going to throw off the whole thing. So it's really important that when you copy and paste events for one car and do it for the other, that you got to make sure you get everything changed. So I'm going to replace this car black with a car white and then right here um, that one it did that automatically when we changed the car so that worked out there um, so i think the rest of that is good so car white and then car black so that should be it there so we got that okay let's go to the next one um, so you can run it and test at that point but that's pretty much it for the wall part there okay um, so now what we're going to do is we are going to add a start screen so that we can create different um, layouts to play on, basically. So we're going to go to our layouts folder here in the upper right. I'm going to save here. That's a good spot to save. Um, right click on the layouts folder in the upper right. And you're going to add a layout. Okay. And we are going to um, add an event sheet with it. And our layout is going to be called start. And our event sheet, we're going to rename that ES start. Okay, so just like that, start and ES start. Okay, and then we're going to go on the actual start layout out here, have it highlighted, and we are going to change the size to 1280 by 720. So that's right up here at the top, 1280 by 720 up here. Okay, 1280 by 720, and it was nice and remembered it for me. Okay, so we've got that part good. Okay, and then we're going to make a sprite. So I'm going to double click and make a sprite. I'm going to call it select dirt. So what we're going to do is there's going to be like um, an icon for selecting the pavement or the dirt on the start screen. So I'm going to call this sol select dirt. Ah, click insert, click on the screen, and then we just need to load the select dirt sprite. Um, well, I think the sprites will be in there. So if you want to just load in the sprite, you can, um, or you can just do a, a fill for now. But I'll see if I can find the sprite here really quick. Um, so I've got to go back to desktop, and then let me see here. Uh, let's give me one second here. Uh, desktop, and then it's under this desktop, and then here. Sorry, I have to dig a little bit to find my assets. Um, and then intermediate game design, and then crash zone assets. Here we go. Now we're in there. All right. So yeah, here's the select dirt. So they're actually in here, so you can just load the asset right away. So I'm going to do the select dirt asset right there. Um, and I think we are good there. So I'm going to close that. And then they want the position to be 805, 500. So let's try that. If it doesn't work, we can put it somewhere else. Sometimes the position in the um, presentations aren't always the best. All right, so I'm going to zoom out so I can see where that went here. Uh, that looks about right to me. So yeah, it should be like right there. Okay, um, now that we have the select dirt, we're going to make select pavement and do the same thing. So I'm just going to add another sprite and we're going to call it, let's go sprite. We're going to call it select pavement. Okay, insert, click on screen, load the image, and now it should be easier because I'm already in there. Here's the select pavement. Perfect, right there. And then we can close. And then the position they want this is 475, 500. So we're going to go 475 comma 500 okay and then we got the select pavement in perfect 
we got that all good to go. All right. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create an object type called a nine patch. So I'm going to double click here and I'm going to type in the number nine and we're going to make something called a nine patch. Basically what a nine patch is, it's basically just a resizable box that has an image border. So it's pretty much what it is. So we're going to use this to make a highlight. Now you wouldn't have to do this with a nine patch. You could do it with a sprite also, but we'll do it with a nine patch just because that's what they want us to do. So we'll do that and we're just going to name it highlight. Highlight and we'll just insert. Okay, and then click on screen. Okay. All right. Uh, so we did that. We did that. All right. So now we're going to resize it to 40 by 40. So we're going to click the resize here and do 40 by 40. Okay. And then we are going to just fill it in with like a bright yellow. So let's use a paint bucket, switch this to like a yellowish color, and we're just going to fill that in. Okay. Just like that. Okay. And then we can close the image editor at that point. Okay. So it looks like a solid yellow box, right? And then because it's a nine patch, we can go into the properties here. And now we've got like all these margins, right? So this is what's gonna give us like that border effect. So if I do a left margin of just say four, and I do, I do all these margins of four, okay? So that's gonna be part of it. And then what we have to do is we have to tell the fill to be transparent. And now you can see because we've said how we want the margins to be, the margins now become the yellow and then the fill we said transparent. So now it has like that middle part in there. Okay. And then we want the origin to be center on this one. Okay. So now we centered the origin. Okay. So now we have our little nine patch here. Now we absolutely could have done the same thing like with a sprite. We would have just like paint bucketed it in and then like made a selection and then just like deleted out the middle. That would have worked the same as well. But nine patch is kind of cool. It's just something different you can use to do a similar effect. For something more complicated, like nine patch is probably going to make more sense, but it just depends on how simple your game is. Okay. All right. So now we're going to rename our event sheet. Well, we did that already. So I'm actually ahead of the presentation on that part there. All right. Now we're going to go to our ES start and open it up. So this highlight, yeah, this can just be sitting there. So ES start, we're going to add an event on ES start, and it's going to be an on start of layout. So system on start. Okay, we got that. Good. All right. So then what we're going to do is we are going to set the size of our highlight to match the um, width and height of the select pavement. So we're going to add an action for the highlight. And we're going to do set size, size here. Okay. And then the width is going to be the select pavement width. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in select pavement dot width. And then the height is going to be select pavement dot height. All right. So we got that. So that's just going to make sure it's the exact size that we want. Okay. And then what we're going to do is then we're going to set its position so that it's sitting right on top of that. So we're going to add another action for highlight. We're going to do set position. And we're going to do set position to another object. And then we're going to set it to the select pavement. And then we're just going to click done. Okay. So what's going to happen is, is if I go to my start screen, even though the pavement is sitting over here, um, because we said we've got to make sure our start is assigned the ES start it is. So if I run it, what's going to happen is, is on start, I'm telling this to set the position to the position of this. So you're not even going to see it over here. It's going to move so fast that it's just going to look like it's starting there. So you can see the highlight is just right over it immediately. So we're good to go there. Okay. So that looks great. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make a keyboard event to make it so that we can switch between the two. So we're going to go back to the ES start. And we're going to add an event for the keyboard. And we're going to do on key pressed. Okay. And we're going to click. And what we're going to do is we're going to say the number one is going to be the left one. And the number two is going to be the right one. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to press the one key here. Click done. Okay. And I'm going to go back to my layout here. So on when we press number one, we're going to set the position to the pavement. 
And when we press two, we're gonna set the position to the dirt. So we go to the ES start. I'm gonna add an action for highlight. Well, actually I can just copy this, right? Here we already have a set position to pavement. So let's just hold control and drag that down like that. And then this whole event here, if I highlight this event too, I'm gonna to copy and paste it. So control C, control V. And this is gonna be if I press the number two now. So I'm gonna change this one to the number two. And then I'm gonna set the pavement to select dirt. Okay. And then I'm gonna save and just run it quick and make sure that that's working. So if I run it, you'll see that the highlight starts on the pavement. If I press two, it goes to the dirt. And if I press one, it goes back. So basically by pressing one and two, I can swap the highlight position. So that looks perfect. Okay, we got that, we got that, we got that. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna make some more variables. So let's go back to our normal ES game event sheet. And now we're gonna need some global variables. So let's go ahead and add a global variable. And we're gonna name it speed. And we're gonna have the initial value be 350. So the reason why we need a speed variable because you might be saying, because we're going to control like how fast the cars go, right? Um, the thing is, is since each layout, we want the cars to have different speeds. What we're going to do is we're going to make it so the car speed is always going to be set to what the global variable is. And then based on which level you pick, we can toggle that global variable. Okay. Um, we're also going to make one called acceleration because we also want to alter how fast or slow the cars accelerate based on, so like on the dirt, they're not gonna accelerate as quickly and they're not gonna go as fast, whereas on the pavement, they're gonna go faster. So let's make another global variable and we're gonna call it acceleration. Uh, let me see, acceleration. Okay, I think I spelled that right, yes I did, okay. And then we're gonna make that 350 as well to start. Okay, so we've got speed and acceleration. And then we're gonna make another global variable called drifting. So basically, if you notice, like if we look at a car, right? Well, I got to go back to my layout here. If I go back to the game, if I just click on like my car black, you'll notice in the car behaviors, we've got speed, drifting, and acceleration. They're all like properties that it has. So all we're doing is we're making, um, we're making global variables that we can just tie into that. And basically then rather than like changing the specific properties of each car, we'll just tie the car to the variable. And then all we have to do is alter the variable to change both the cars at the same time. It's just an easier way to adjust the settings without having to manually do each one all the time. So we're gonna make another one, another global variable here called drifting. And then we're gonna set drifting to be 400. Okay, perfect. So the new one should be speed, acceleration and drifting. Okay, so we got that. All right, so now what we're going to do is um, we need to make an on start of layout um, on, and this is on the ES game, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, <clears throat> add a new event. We're going to do system on start, okay? And I'm going to put the on start at the top. That's where I like to put them. So let's put the on start at the very top. And then what we're going to do is we are going to basically set the values of the cars to match what the global variable is. So we're going to start with car black and we're going to do set max speed. Okay, and then we're just going to set it to the speed variable. Okay, so we're going to type in speed and we're just going to set it to that. Okay, so we've got that. So basically we're gonna do this for both cars and we're gonna do it for all of the properties. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do car black and we're gonna set acceleration. We're gonna set it to the acceleration variable. Okay, and we're gonna add another event for car black and we're gonna do set drift recover. So if I just type in drift, okay, and then we're gonna set it to drifting, okay. So now we've got that, all right? And I think we've got all of that. Oh, we also need to set the deceleration of the car also to that variable. So I'm gonna add another action for car black and we're gonna set the value. Um, oops, wrong one, sorry. Car black, we're gonna do set deceleration. So if I just type in deceleration, there we go. So we're gonna set deceleration and we're gonna set it to the acceleration global variable like that. Okay, so I'll put these next to each other because that's how they do it in the presentation. So the four actions you should have, this should be an on-start of layout. 
it should these should all be for car black we're going to set the speed to speed set the acceleration to acceleration set the deceleration to acceleration okay and then we're going to set the drift recover to drifting so basically as so it might seem confusing that we're setting the deceleration to the acceleration variable remember the variable is just a number right so we're just making it so the car will accelerate and decelerate by the same amount so if the acceleration is say 350 then the deceleration will also be 350 but we can control it through one variable since we want the acceleration and deceleration to be the same thing there's no point in making an extra variable for deceleration now if you had a situation where you wanted it to decelerate at a different rate than you would accelerate then you could create a different variable and you could program that separately so if that's something you want to do as a bonus you definitely could do that okay all right uh let me just see here so now what we're going to do is we're essentially just going to copy all of these and we're going to do the same thing for car white so i'm going to hold control and i'm going to highlight all four of these and then i'm going to press control c to copy and control v to paste and it's going to make a bunch of them and then we're just going to replace all these car blacks with car white so if we do replace object with car white and you'll see since i had all of them highlighted it will actually replace all of them at the same time. So that way you don't have to do them all separate. So I did that in just like one click there. So if you accidentally unselected it, just hold control and highlight all four of them and then right click and you can replace object and it'll replace all of them at the same time. And then all of these parts here should all be the same because none of them involved car black or car white specifically. Okay, so we've got that there. All right, so now we're gonna go to the event on the ES start event sheet for when we press one here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the value of the speed variable. So now the speed is going to change based on what level we're picking at the beginning, right? So I'm going to add an action here on the one pressed and we're going to do system set value. And we're going to set speed to 350. So we're going to do speed. So 350, basically what we're saying is when you're on the pavement level, that's what the car speed is going to be. Okay. So we're going to do that. Um, and then we're going to set acceleration to 400. So let's add an action for that system, set value. And we're going to set acceleration to 400. Okay. And then we're going to add another one. And we're going to set drifting to 400. Okay. So we're going to do that. So we're going to do drifting. And we're going to do 400. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same things onto the two, but we're going to change the numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control and just copy all three of these down like that. And then on the dirt level, we're going to do speed to 250 instead. Whoops, speed to 250. There we go. And then we're going to do acceleration to 300. We're going to do drifting to 125. Okay, so now, whoops. So now what we've done is when we're on the start layout, just by pressing one and two to make a selection, we're changing those global variables every time we do it. So if I select the dirt, these global variables all change to this. And then when I run the layout, it goes to ES game and it does this on start and it changes all of the car's values to match those global variables. So the reason why this is nice now is let's say you wanted to make a third level. So maybe as a bonus, what if you wanted to make a level where you're like racing on ice, right? And you tried to make it like really poor acceleration because ice, you just have poor traction and you wanted to like change the numbers even more. That's something you could do, right? All right. So I'm just going to check here. Um, all right. So now what we're going to do is, oh, this one's pretty basic. We're just going to go back to our ES start. We need to make it so we can actually run the game, right? So all we're going to do is we're going to add another keyboard event. So I'm going to add an event for keyboard on key pressed. And we're going to do spacebar. Okay, click done. And then when we press space, um, we basically just want to go to the game layout. So I'm going to add an action system, go to layout. And we want to go to the game layout. Okay, just like that. And I think we're almost there. So we have to make a couple of changes now because we've changed some of those variables. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go um, onto ES game. Um, and then we're gonna go to the every tick event. 
Let me find that. Here's the every tick here. Okay. And then we need to find the the one that does the cart the damage multiplier here. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into this one. And um, basically, instead of oh yeah. So here where it says three fifty, we're going to change that three fifty to our speed variable so that that's actually going to change our multiplier based on what level we're on. Okay. So we're going to click done there, and then we're going to do the same thing on this one. So on this car white here, we're going to double click that, and we're going to change this 350 to the speed multiplier. That. Okay. All right, so we've got that part done. And that is it for section three. So hopefully that all went well for you, but here I'll just kind of scroll through my code quick so you can make sure you got it right. There's, um, there's also... Um, sample code that you can just look through in Google Classroom as well. And then we just did the ES start here. But go ahead and save at that point, test it out, make sure it's working. If it's not working, review the video or review the sample code and kind of see where you maybe made a mistake, okay?